In the previous video, we're having problems of updating the context page. So let's go to context page and see what's happening. So we have this constructor here where we actually use the context repository in the constructor and we get the context and we assign the context to the item source. So you may be thinking that this is the reason because the context page once it's activated, once it's created, it lives there in the memory. And uh, when we are back, like when we never get back from the added contact page to the context page, uh, this will not be executed. So if we can find a place to activate, uh, to call this two lines of code again, we might be able to solve this problem. So let's actually do that. Okay, so I'm cutting those two lines and we're trying to override one of the event in the uh, event cycle, which is uh, on appearing. Okay, so this on appearing is going to be called every time the page regains the focus. Okay, for example, if another page is on top and then when we never get back to this page, then the on appearing will be called. Of course, when the page is just created, the first time it appears, uh, the on appearing is going to be called. It seems to be the perfect place to, um, to call these two lines of code. And let's actually try that. Okay, let's run the application. Okay, I'm going to go to Tom Hanks and I'm going to make a change. Right, add a dot again, and then I don't know his phone number. I'm just going to use Toronto's phone number, for example, random phone number. Uh, clicking on the update button. I'm going to remove this breakpoint, continue. And you can see we're still having the same problem, right? Still having the same problem. If we click on it again, you can see it is actually already updated, Tom.x, right? And we have the phone number. But going back, well, it's not showing. Okay, so what is actually happening? What is actually happening? You may be thinking, oh, maybe the on appearing is not being called when we go back. Let's set a breakpoint and see uh, what's actually happening there. So on appearing, I'm going to set a breakpoint here. Right? So let's click on this Tom Hanks. Go to Tom Hanks and then come back. Right? Whether we click on or cancel or update, it's going to navigate back. You can see that is actually being called. Right? It's being called. And if we look at the contacts, I think that's number three, right? You can see that it's actually have the correct data with the phone number, but the problem is with this line. So it's it looks like this line is not working. And then that's that's true. It's actually not working. So let's go to the uh, diagram. Let's draw something to, so that uh, hopefully I can make you understand what is actually happening. So for example, we have a page here. So this is a page. And then this page actually displays some data, right? So let's make it um, vertical so it looks like a cell phone, right? Uh, and then we have some data that is loaded in the, in the memory. So I'm using a circle to represent that the data is loaded in the memory, right? But remember that we have a, a view, a view in here. In this case, we have a list view. and when the list view is populated with the data, the list view stores a copy of that data in a different format, of course. Uh, and in the memory, we have another copy of that data, which is in the, in the contact uh, repository. These two copies are not the same copy. So in .NET MAUI, if you don't notify the list view or any view, there's a change in the data. The data in the list view or any other views will not actually update. Right? You have to actually tell it to notify the view that, that there is a change in the data and then the view will do the update. So that's more or less like a unique thing that you have to do in Donet MAUI. If you came from a web application background, you may be thinking that's pretty weird, right? but, but this is this is what's happening in Donet MAUI. You have to notify it. And the way to notify it is to use observable data. So 
uh, it's like observe pattern where you have the data here and then you have the subscribers. So you have sub subscriber one, subscriber two, you know, you have different number of subscribers. Let's say we only have two. And then the subscriber is actually subscribing to the observable data. And, and when the observable data changes, it's going to actually send a notification. And because both subscriber one and subscriber two subscribe to the observable data, then it actually receives that notification and then uh, the subscriber can do whatever it wants. Right? So in DotMI, this is already built in, right? In the in the views. So in our case, we have the list view in here, and this list view is actually uh, when you bind the data to the list view, the list view tries to subscribe. But because you can see that we are not using observable data so this is just a list list of contacts right it's a regular list so that's why it's not actually working because a regular list cannot send notification to the .NET MAUI views right in this case is list view so how do we solve this problem let's go back to our code and then in here let's remove the breakpoint instead of just call the repository get contacts we can use observable collection right so new observable collection you gotta do control dot to import namespace it's from system.collections.object model so when we do that and we can provide the type of the element and then in here we can call the repository to provide the data and of course here this is going to be a observable so we can use var and now let's rebuild the application and redeploy to our emulator our application is running let's click on one of the contact and let's make the same change i'm going to add actually i'm going to add a dash here uh, and then whatever the phone number is, doesn't matter. We're going to work on the um, validation later. So clicking on update, go back over here. You can see that tom-hanks at gmail.com is being displayed. So that solves our problem, right? Because we are using observable collection, so when the observable collection changes, it actually notify the list view. So the list view then is able to update itself with the new data. Otherwise, it's just uh, keep the data in the memory without updating, which actually saves resources, right? So that's what I want to cover in this video, and I'll see you in the next one.